Hi, Rob here. Today we're going to make an adapter to go on my weed whacker so I can put some wheels on it and uh, use it like for a lawnmower. I'll show you some examples on Amazon. Here's one on Amazon. I actually bought this one, but it's too light for what I need around my yard. Here's another one. For this one, you place your weed trimmer on a wheeled platform that resembles a lawnmower. But I thought was, if I'm going to resemble a lawnmower, I might as well buy a lawnmower and forget my tr weed trimmer idea. And this one's pretty unique. It's like a weed trimmer on skis. Finally, this device most resembles what I ended up constructing. But as you will see, I think what I built is superior. I'll go through my process and my three different prototypes before I settled on a final design. But I got these uh, wheels at Harbor Freight. They were like $4.59 a piece. And then I got some aluminum bar and I'm gonna fabricate it to come across the back of the weed whacker guard. And then I'm gonna bend it, have a 90 to come down to clear the, the uh, line and then have the wheel. Just have to play around and get the right adjustment. But this way it will be much easier to mow the weeds and we got a little patch of lawn and so we'll see what happens. I took a measurement and it, it looks like if I'm five inches below the, the top of this shield and then I put my uh, wheel on there so there's the line at five inches and I mount the wheel, but that that should be a pretty good height to cut grass or weeds. And then I can put some some holes in here to make it adjustable. You know, put three or four make it adjustable up and down. So I'm going to bend the uh, aluminum bar and then drill some holes and attach it across the back here. And I'm measuring about eight inches from the center of the head back to the to the cutoff right there so that means I need to have my bar come out at least eight inches on either side so I'm gonna make it 16 inches from where I did my bend and then I've got another line here or mark at 16 where I'll bend it and then we'll have another five inch piece hanging down with the holes for the wheels here I am, I got it in my vise. Don't mind my messy desk or bench here. All kinds of stuff, but I have my line and I'll just start bending it around. And then we'll get a nice good bend with a hammer. There we go pretty good. Mark it five inches, cut it off, and we'll attach it, see what happens. I've got my holes drilled in the five inch uh, extension that goes down at a half inch, one inch, and one and a half from the bottom. And it's sized so the bolt for my uh, wheel will fit through the hole. And then I have some pilot holes drilled in the top. And I'm going to line it up here. I already have one hole drilled, but I'm going to use its nail as my guide. way when I drill on this other side over here I get it in the center and I'll just just eyeball it to line things up and drill a pilot hole and then drill it out for the bolts. I've got the holes drilled on each side and I'm going to drill it out for this bolt that I'll use to uh, attach this to the top. Here's my completed design Got my uh, aluminum bar bent and bolted in the back. I'm down five inches and my wheels from Harbor Freight, the casters. I have holes drilled in um, half inch, one inch and one and a half from the bottom of this five inch extension, which goes out eight inches from the guard so that my string will clear. And I'm ready to give it a test. I just gave it a test in my backyard. I felt I felt the bottom hole, it was cutting uh, the weeds 
making them too tall. So I'm going to move it up to the, uh, the top hole just to see. But I wanted to show you, I have my uh, bolt, which is the axle, and a washer on the outside, washer on the inside, and then the nut. So here we got the bolt with the nut through the wheel and then the washer, excuse me, the bolt with the washer through the wheel, washer on the inside, we'll put it in the top hole and we will tighten the nut on the inside and be ready to test it again. It was just a little too long, the, this first hole at half an inch, the bar was a little too long. It was hitting the ground, so I had to trim that off. So now I'm in my, my five inch extension. I'm in the hole an inch and a half up and we'll test that. I think it's gonna be better for length. And I did that on both ends. So we'll give it another test. Okay, we're ready to field test with the new setting. Here we go. Well, I gave it a test. It worked fine, but going forward and back when I tried to go sideways was kind of a pain. So what I did is I went to Home Depot. I got some casters, some round ones, and I'm going to try to zip tie them onto the bottom of my aluminum frame. If not, I'll try something else. I've got the wheels zip tied on if this works, I'll uh, try using some Gorilla Glue to glue it to the aluminum, because I don't know how secure the zip tie is going to be, but let's give it a try. Here we go. Just used it to uh, cut the weeds in my backyard, but it's a little too tall. It's kind of hard to see here, but I think I need to shorten these legs about an inch and a half. So they're just a bit too tall. I have to elevate the handle way up to get the front to come down to cut it at the height. So I'll shorten the legs and we'll try it again. Okay, I've got the wheels uh, zip tied onto my aluminum here. I, I shortened this aluminum two inches so it would cut shorter and then I drilled four holes and two zip ties. We'll try, test this, see how it works. And if it works good, I might use some Gorilla Glue to glue this good and solid and firm to the aluminum, but we'll see. Okay, we'll see how it works with the new uh, height. It's working much better for uh, back and forth, side to side, and height-wise, but I'm concerned that my aluminum is starting to flex. It's, it's not strong enough. And I've considered getting some metal, but what I'm going to do first is get some wood. Let me show you in the garage. What I meant to say is I may try a steel cross piece versus the aluminum cross piece I'm using, as steel should be stronger and not flex as of the aluminum one is. But first I'm going to make a new cross piece out of wood and see if it works better than the aluminum one. I went to Home Depot and got some wood off the scrap pile. This was 70% off. It's a one by two. I'm going to use this to replace the uh, aluminum. And then I, I bought a two by two and I'll use this for my casters to insert to, and I've ordered some caster inserts off Amazon. So we'll try a wooden bracket versus the aluminum and see if that will give me enough strength. Otherwise, I'm happy with the height and the side to side with the casters. So we'll t test out this wood, see how that works. And I had to buy some longer bolts to go through the wood and then into the weed eater, weed trimmer itself. I got some inch and a half. That ought to be plenty of long. 
I have the wood attached. Sorry about the noise, but they're building a house next door. So we'll try the wood on the front lawn here. Works pretty good, I like it. This is my final configuration with the wood. And as you can see here, I got the casters and some inserts. I got These are the caster inserts I got from Amazon. I think they were like $8.29 for a package of 20. So now I can make 10 weed trimmer attachments. Maybe you'll buy one from me. Who knows? Got it bolted through and I've got it adjusted so that the wheel is uh, three inches below the trimmer so we can have our grass nice and tall. And the wood's much more rigid than the aluminum that I originally started with. The problem with the aluminum, it just flex too much, whereas the wood's stiffer and the wood's easier to work with. So good luck if you decide to build one of these. I think it's a pretty worthwhile conversion of a line trimmer to a lawnmower and vice versa. Good luck. To view more of my videos, click here. To be notified when I release a new video, click here to subscribe to my channel.